I want to talk about the how and the why you do what you do. So talk about the why first. The power of education is something that people know about and know about yeah. what literacy can do. But as you see it, what is it that, that simply learning to read and having access to books can, yeah. can open up? Well, I'll, I'll let you ask the audience to visualize. You know, visualize one of your ancestors who grew up in poverty. Could have been a parent, like my father, grew up in poverty. His father had a second grade education. Maybe it's a grandparent. But every one of us has a story somewhere in our lineage of the generation that made the leap from poverty to being middle class or higher. And almost always education has a role to play in that. We might take that more for granted in North America because we've had universal education. Yeah, our systems are not perfect in any place, but we have so much more than the rest of the world has. And so for me, it's really simple. It's, there's both a heart reason and a head reason. The heart reason is I, I got lucky. My father was only one of seven children to go to university. He went because he got a scholarship. I grew up in a nice middle-class existence with a school library and a good school and a public library in a small town. And so the heart reason is I know I got lucky and I owe it to the world, but the head reason is simple. It's just that if you can solve this issue, education is the one issue that has the ripple effect. It affects every other issue. Educated people make more money and earn their way out of poverty. Educated women are twice as likely to vaccinate their children. Educated women have lower infant mortality and lower maternal mortality. Educated people are much more stable and much more peaceful. Um, the list just goes on and on and on. And of course, education pays itself over generation after generation after generation. So. My favorite line is Archidemy said, you know, give me a lever long enough and I can move the earth. To me, education is that lever. And as we're going to talk about, I'm sure, it's not all that difficult, it's not all that expensive, and it can be done at scale. So the entrepreneur in me looks at the world today and says, man, let us add it. Because if we can reach tens of millions of kids with this opportunity to gain literacy and to gain education, they will be set for life. And in one generation, they will not need foreign aid. It'll you self-sufficient. There's a line in the book that says you can, a young boy can either pick up an AK-47 or a book. What do you mean by that? I mean, but I mean I, and what's the effect of that? Because to a lot of people, and we talked about this a little bit this morning, yeah. to a lot of people that seems like a nice idea, but beyond really what a book can do. Yeah, well, let me give you an example from our room and relationship with the U.S. State Department. We've convinced, and they convinced us, we convinced them uh, in a conversation to use books and libraries as a tool of diplomacy throughout South and Central Asia. So in Bangladesh, Nepal, India, and Sri Lanka, there's now a relationship between the U.S. State Department and Room to Read. And when these kids in hundreds of locations go to school in the morning and they go to their library, there's a plaque in that library saying, built by the local community, because we want to salute the parents for their labor, with funding provided by the people of the United States of America. And then they go in and they pick up a book and they open it. And the inside front cover, it says, this book is a gift from the, from the people of the United States of America. Now, this is diplomacy on the cheap. A book costs a dollar for us to print in a local language. So State Department, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, a couple hundred thousand more books. Libraries, $5,000. So you impact an entire village. And I'm not limiting this to the United States. Well, Canada could do it. Sweden could do it. Norway could do it. And I think it's important because when kids are told the West hates you, when kids are told strap on this backpack and go walk yourself into that airport or that crowd, I want kids to say, Canada doesn't hate me. The United States doesn't hate me. I learned to read at a school funded by these countries. And the world right now is so integrated and it's so global and we, we have no more drawbridges. We have no more moats. Like it or not, the world is more interconnected than ever before and it's getting more interconnected, not less interconnected. So my challenge to the world is to say, do we want our neighbors to be peaceful and prosperous and stable or do we want them to actually be able to have somebody fill their head with hate? And I think that a child who's educated, it's just so obvious, a child who's educated is not going to hate. A child who's educated is going to be stable, peaceful, prosperous, and they're going to have too much going on to be worried about all this crap that goes on in the world, like telling girls they shouldn't go to school.